What's going on with y'all? The life so, you're living now. Oh, whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on. Now look, I saw a TikTok of Tristan Tate selling something, selling some cigar on the spot, right? And I was like, I, I gotta see this in the full context, so I'm gonna watch it because say what y'all want, okay? Y'all might have some some opinions about Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate, but one thing that cannot be denied is they both know how to talk. And so I think it is worth watching how they can communicate so well. So I want to learn what they, I want to see what they do, what he does, at least in this specific situation, and what we can learn from it. So I think this is a uh, sales one-on-one. So without me yapping so much, let's just get straight to it. The life you're living now of the wealth, that's like the new norm to you, right? I'm trying not to let it feel normal, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to stay humble, but it's very difficult to... It's very difficult to keep your mind switched on like it used to be 10 years ago in regards to the price of things. I don't know how much bread and milk are and various yeah, yeah. things like this. Or, um, you know, when you spend money or when you buy a new car, the feeling of excitement isn't quite there like your first ever supercar. And I try. Bro, what type of suits this man be getting, bro? This man literally looks like a Bruce Wayne dog. My very best to think like the old Tristan. How would I feel at 19 mm. if I had just booked this 140 grand private jet flight to Miami? How would I feel? But you you, yeah, can't, yeah. you, you become slightly numb to it. Yeah. It is normal. See, this, it is what is normal. this is what I'm thinking because when you're linking up with these people from your, your past days, does it make you think, yeah, man, I miss the brokey days. I miss the life where you don't have to really care so much about this or that, but... And you have those people around you, you're just hanging around them. Well, the thing is, I still have those people around me. Um, most of my friends who I have, I've known for 15, 20 years. Mm. And I, I still speak to the same people. I mean, uh, Rory, a lot of you know. Marcel, a lot of you know, if you watch any of my content online. Mm -hmm. You know, I hang around with the same people I've known forever. So, no, I don't ever miss the brokey days. But speaking about them with my old friends makes me appreciate what I have now. Yeah, that fair yeah. So where did you go from there, Tristan? From working at the, so we go from the sandwich shop to selling television commercials on, uh, on the phone. Well, that business, there was a small venture where my brother and a, another senior salesman at that company decided to start their own venture selling TV advertising because the boss ran it very badly, to be, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. And I was working for them for a while, but that business ended up falling into nothing. Yeah, so he had some brother. sales he was experience. Probably, what, 20 before. years old at the time. Yep. First ever business he's run. The other guy, you know, probably 25, 26 at the time, but, but, but very irresponsible. And the business ended up collapsing and falling apart because television advertising died. I think that... What year is this? This is... So I must have been 21, so maybe 14 years ago. So 2010. 10, yeah, okay, yeah, fair enough, yeah. So the, the, the problem was, I think, I, that would be an impossible business to run nowadays. Mm -hmm. To call people and try to convince them to spend 20, 30, 40 grand on to TV. advertise on television, yeah, forget they'd it. be like, well... I can get my niece to make a TikTok video and try and make it go viral. Yep. And the internet has killed television advertising. Only the biggest of the biggest companies now do it. So there's no more medium-sized companies aspiring to do it. So True. you're thinking of selling TV advertising. Yeah, everybody's thinking just going to the influencers because they have the most audience. They have the Starting biggest audience. As a business. Good luck to you, but I think yep. today it would be very difficult. Very and difficult. it started failing around 2010. I worked a myriad of various sales jobs um, from selling windows to home improvements. Uh, I actually made a lot of money when conservatory insulation first kicked off. So conservatories are either too hot or too cold, and people were insulating the ceilings. And I worked for a company in Milton Keynes with a guy who actually my former boss used to know, the former television advertising boss used to know, named Andy. And he ran this, this ragtag outfit of random salespeople from all sorts of backgrounds mm -hmm. to go around, rent, knock on doors, cold call, anything you could do to drag clients in any house with a conservatory. So I used to go out on rainy days or super hot sunny days or super cold days and leaflet houses in, in nice areas like, like Radlett, like Hitchin, like the, the areas close yeah, to Luton yeah. where people had conservatories in their houses and I'd, I'd follow up on the leads and so, and I was the top salesman at the company. Selling white gold. Yeah, and yeah. I, was, I was 22, 23 and I was, I was selling, I was making for myself well over a thousand pounds a week. Which, which isn't bad, especially 10 years yeah, ago. Yeah, that's pounds a week. It was a, lot of money. it was a lot of money. And that was my first taste of ever actually having money. Mm. And when I mean having money, it means, which is crazy because my, my threshold on having money is very low because I've been very broke. Having money at 23 meant to me 
that when I went to the supermarket, I could get anything I liked. Mm. That that was wild. Yeah, you, like, you have to think twice like, exactly. about it. Exactly. Like, oh, pot noodles. Yeah, I can afford these. Yeah. Oh, a jar of olives that costs five pounds because they've got cheese in them. Like, okay, I can buy those. You could just buy whatever you liked from the supermarket. Yeah. That was mind blowing. That was mind blowing, and that was uh, yeah, that Did was. You my, should say cheese and olives. Is that a British thing? Bro, which I got over there. <laughs> Observatory installation and sales olives. job, but that was. I mean, I made very good money, and again, you learn a lot of very difficult lessons. You have the door slammed in your face. You have people answer the door with their dog barking at you. <laughs> what do you want? And you're like, uh, hello, sir. Well, I've noticed you have a- Yeah, you do get a d different, a whole lot. Bro, I was, bro, the people that be in the malls all the time, and y'all know y'all have those people that try to sell you on cleaning your shoes. Yeah, I was one of those, but I was trying to sell you some hair products. So I know you get a whole different type of people. I mean, all types of people. Conservatory that, and you're trying to pitch them. It's everybody it's very should difficult. do sales and at least once. I in think life. the internet has killed that. I think that every single year for the last probably hundred years, up until 2010, salesmen got better and better and stronger, and the science was refined, and the science of sales was perfected. And I think now it's gotten worse. I feel like the younger generation aren't built to walk around in the rain and knock on doors and try to. So, bro, basically said. Uh, our generation is soft. <laughs> We're not gritty or persistent enough. Hustle money out of selling conservatory insulation or windows. Windows, so, are, windows are hard <clears throat> to sell, bro. Everyone has windows. Yeah. Houses all have windows, and you have to knock on the door and convince him to get rid to, of his old yeah, ones and put the new ones and in. Buy it's new funny windows. because there was a Netflix series called White Gold, which mm -hmm. is why I said it. it's called White Gold, right? And it was all on the idea of these sales guys' comedy show mm -hmm. selling PVC. But the fact that they're basically just trying to sell this PVC as much as possible, yeah. telling these cus these people to get rid of their old one for no apparent reason yes. to get the new one in. That's exactly what I do. Like that's a product there, where that so you have some you have to just learn to sell it properly. Yeah. And, and nowadays yeah. you have youngsters that just like, oh well, sales is hard. You know, I sent a bunch of cold emails. I didn't get a reply. Cold email mm. is hard. You think copying and pasting and sending is yeah, hard? Yeah, literally just putting you don't on know what hard is. Just, try, yeah. try dialing them on the phone. Yeah. You probably have a lot more success. How do you do with negotiations? Uh, so not negotiations, uh, rejections. Rejections? I've always dealt with rejections very... I recorded and edited my 45-minute podcast in under 10 minutes using Riverside, and here's how. After I finished recording with... Very, very well. I was very pragmatic. When I got a no... I obviously store the number, store the lead, call them back next week just to see if it was a, it was a final no. I had a very organized system, mm -hmm. and I think that's uh, a key to mine lender's success. We're very organized people. He's probably more organized than me. He calls me disorganized, even though I'm 10 times more organized than the normal person because he's slightly more organized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, quite annoying. But um, yeah, I was, I was extremely organized. I was extremely polite. I was very polite with rejections. And I'm, yeah, that's I, another thing. Don't be... Don't get in your feelings or mad about it because you want to still leave a good lasting impression. Because then that might make them change their mind. Like, oh, you know what? Let me let me rethink this and then get a sale off of that. Been polite with rejections in every single way my entire life, which is the best way to be. Woman rejects you, be polite. Sales customer rejects you, be polite. Be polite always. I manners gets you, you know, very very far. True. And a lot of the customers who then maybe change their minds call me back because I was such a pleasant at the time young man mm. and they they liked me and they you know they had the, i built some rapport with them so no when you get rejected in anything in life say you go for a job interview and you get rejected always behave like a gentleman and always behave uh, amicably yeah, because be diplomatic it and professional. will eventually if you live long enough backfire if you start treating rejection badly so i've always been fine with rejection don't bother me at this point then andrew being two years older than you where is he financially so at the time Broke is the answer, but um, <laughs> short answer, broke. Long answer, he was actually making money kickboxing. I was kickboxing a bit, training a bit, fighting for five, six hundred pounds of fight. He was actually making three, four, five, ten grand a fight. So he was making some, I call that broke, but then, you know. In, in looking, the grand scheme of things, Looking yeah. back, yeah. He, he was broke. We still lived in a rented two-bedroom apartment back then. But yeah, he, he was kickboxing. I was working the job. So if he didn't have any fights, because of my job, the rent was always paid. But then when he was winning fights, we could go on vacation and buy nicer things. Mm. So we've always, you know, worked together and pooled our resources together. We've never thought of ourselves as, as separate entities. Yeah, first. So would you say <clears throat> you still have the sales? You, you would... <clears throat> One second, sorry. <laughs> <laughs>
you need a cigar. It helps helps the uh, I'm gonna get to flow this. smoother. I'm gonna get to this. Watch, Work, one works for me. I'm gonna get to this. Would you say you still have the sales skills in you? No, he finna try to get them right now. One hundred percent. Yeah. If I went broke tomorrow, the the problem is because I'm famous, the Tate brand in and of itself is worth so much. I couldn't go broke. If I went broke, I could make the money back somehow. Yeah. But I could start selling cigars or ties or something. Yeah. So if I told you right now, sell me this cigar, putting you on the spot. You're putting me on the spot to sell you this cigar. Yep. That's the part okay, I saw. What's your experience with cigars? Do you like cigars? <sighs> Sometimes they can get to my throat a bit. And then uh, end up coughing or something like well, that. Well, that's your problem. That's because you've been buying the lower quality cigars. What's your tip? See, so basically what he just did, he just got straight to it. He, he just, hey, he said I was ready. So, yeah, so, and um, sales, you usually have to find a uh, pain, you have to find a pain point. You ask them questions. You're kind of like a consultant in the beginning where you're just asking them questions to find like the desires or the pain points. And then that's what you target. And so you talk about, okay, this is your pain point. Okay, you're having this pain point because you're not using our product to do such and such and such. He got straight to it, though. budget when you purchase each stick? Mm. I think the most I've spent on a cigar is probably about 200 pounds. See, well, that's your problem right there because this cigar actually costs $350 per cigar and the way that the tobacco is aged before they... See, he said... So basically, he just said, although you usually pay 300 this is more expensive than what you normally pay for it. But here are the reasons why it's more expensive and why it's more valuable. They roll it is the key. The smoothness of the cigar comes not when you make it, not when you roll it, not when you put the label on it, but it's the process after picking the tobacco to, di to drying it, flavoring it, spicing it, and aging it. He just basically gave him the whole process of how to do it. And he hasn't even stuttered once. That's crazy to think about. And that's where the smoothness comes in, like a fine whiskey or a fine cognac. So what you need to do is smoke fewer cigars per week. Don't go for three or four at 100, 200 bucks each. Just treat yourself every Friday night to one of these. This is truly exceptional. The coughing will stop. The smoothness will be there. You'll notice a... F truly exceptional. The coughing will stop. He's talking about his pain points. He's talking about the, the, uh, with the product, the features of the cigar. Of greater enjoyment from your cigar, cigar experience than you've ever enjoyed before. It's three hundred fifty dollars. Do you want this? Uh, I don't know, Justin. Three hundred fifty dollars seems a bit out of my budget, man. Well, you know what? If you can't afford it, that's perfectly fine because I have customers who can. And things like this, they don't stay on the market for very long. <laughs> this gave him FOMO, fear of missing out. Like, oh, okay. He's putting into it. Say, okay, if I don't get this now, somebody else will buy it. So this is definitely going to go. If I and he's he's assuring him, yeah, somebody's going to buy this. <laughs> the humidor at the cigar store. So if you don't want to buy it, it's no problem for me, and you could stick to what you have, and. Keep coughing. Gears have got to be right there. Light the cigar up. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to, while you lit your cigar, I just want to talk about that quickly as well, right? That cigar, that lighter you got right there. Yes. Talk to me about it because we'll talk about it off camera and I was like, nah, this is crazy. This is an uh, ST DuPont uh, roulette complication lighter. Cost me $55,000. It's uh, one of the jewels of my lighter collection. I think I just made a full mess of that, didn't I? Yeah, you did and you cut it badly, but it's okay. It's all right. We're trying, we're trying. You gotta, see, I can I, your inexperience is showing just inexperience, there. Yeah, no inexperience, yeah. I got well, a lock yeah. in. So cool. this has a roulette complication in it. It's got rubies. It's made by uh, Tissot, the watch manufacturer, the mechanism inside. It's made out of white gold. Yep. And has a flame to light your cigars with. So now, ask me to sell you this lighter. Go on. Not worth it. Can't do it. Really? Nope. Be super rich and be super extravagant. And maybe you'll buy it because you're insane like me. But yeah. there's no way I can convince you to buy this lighter. But why would you justify spending that much money on a lighter? I get that you smoke cigars. And another thing too, he just did. He just underst he understood his demographic of like the people that would buy something so outrageous, like that. Um, he knows other dudes' budgets, so he knows there's no convincing you to buy something as outrageous as this. So, I mean, that's another thing too. You just gotta find a demographic, your customer profile. Cigars, and you like cigars, yeah. But smoking that much money on it is the same. Roll the top towards you. Oh, towards me, yeah. yeah. Mm, interesting. Why would I buy that lighter? Because I like it. <laughs> you know, when I was when I was young and poor, I'm going to explain this. When I was young and poor, I used to see people buy very expensive things, and I would think of all the things I could buy instead. You have to keep it in your mouth while you light it, and there we go until the whole end is glowing. He's probably going to say something, but he realized now that he has the money that what was valuable to him at the time is not valuable to him anymore.
like fifty five, like fifty dollars to him is probably not. It's probably like ten dollars to him. Smoother than your other cigars, right? There it is. You close know what? It. This one's on the house. I'm not going to charge you three hundred fifty bucks. No, close it. Yep. It's close. So, lighters like this. I mean, I used to see rich people buy things like that. And if I was broke, if you were to, if I was nineteen and you were to put me in front of a person who bought a fifty-five thousand dollar lighter, I'd be like, oh, fifty-five thousand dollars. That's crazy. Yeah. I'd upgrade my car. I'd buy a new bed. I'd rent a bigger apartment. I'd do all these things with fifty-five grand. That's a waste. What should I have done with the money instead? Me. I already run a massive charity. I already give loads away. I already feed kids all over the world. I already have everything I want. Why not have that lighter? Mm. It's, it becomes a matter of why not. You know, why would you buy a Zippo for $50 as opposed to a 50-cent lighter? Because it's plastic. It does the same thing. Why? It looks slightly cooler. Does it do anything different? No. It's harder to fill up. It's more hassle. You'd be more annoyed if you lost it. Well, that's that. However, to me, $55,000 is probably very similar to $50 to a lot of people out there who own the Zippos. So it's you, no different. You know, as compared to a watch here, would you say this is almost like a great conversation sort of? If you're in a club or something like that with another other entrepreneur on the same level of wealth, he asks for a lighter and you fix this up and he's like, yo. It can be with the right people. Yeah. And it's not necessarily the way it looks, it's the way it sounds. If you're in a cigar lounge and you hear that... Um, that ping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That just sounds like money. You know it's a DuPont. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know it's from this brand. And these, these lighters, I mean, the, even this brand start at around two or three thousand mm. dollars. But I'll be there in a high end. Yeah, that's actually crazy. But there's a market for that. There's a certain type of people that spend a lot of money on certain things they care about. Like there's, um, there are people who look at wealthy people crazy for buying something such as this. Um, but I think if everyone was. Uh, had the level of wealth to where they could buy whatever they want and they wouldn't care about it, they would do it. Because it's, it's, cause once you're in that threshold, you're like, oh, like what I thought was expensive really isn't. So you, you would just, I think you'll do in, it. Let's say Vienna where, you know, we're on a roof terrace, smoking's loud and all here. Yeah. On the other side, I'll go, someone's lighting a cigar with DuPont. Yeah. Who is that guy? So the sound Those is Those are all the cigar, cigar, cigar is. Smoker, you know that. But no, nothing can really justify buying it apart from the fact that Fifty-five thousand to me is the same as fifty bucks to most people. So why not have a nice lighter that I like? Yeah, I like it. I think it's beautiful. It's a work of art. Yes. Why not have it? I'm gonna put this there because I think the smoke's gonna come in. <clears throat> All right. I, I like the sales pitch though. It worked, didn't it? Did it work? Yeah, it definitely worked. The cigar was smoother as well. The it? cigar was smoother as well. It was. It's just unfortunate I got a sales. And also, also too, another thing is, um, since. I think one thing that helps is Tristan also uses the product that he was talking about so he knows a lot about it and he believes in what he's selling because he spent 50000 on a lighter for a cigar so he obviously cares about he loves smoking cigars so that's something that he knows a lot about but yeah this was good this was good this was good to see um, just asking questions and just also being confident in what you're talking about. You could tell that he knew what he was talking about, and so that allowed him to flow so easily. I can't even yeah. speak for no me. one's ever put me on the spot and told me to sell him anything. But well, I, well. I mean, I, first I, for everything. Jesus, but I've, I've still got the skills there. You could tell I've worked in sales for a very long time. Yeah. You know, and in the end, move is called the takeaway. Well, it's no problem. You know, I don't need to sell this. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. At the end, you make it seem like you're not trying to sell it. You're just choking. You're just giving him a. a a transfer of energy like, oh, okay if you don't want to sell it that's cool You're just giving them information and the world power to do it for themselves so yeah that was that was good to watch though but with that being said though peace out